Do I have any worship person person in the building tonight? <laughs> Today is December the 4th, 2011, and we thank you for taking the time out of your day to spend with the Greater New Hope International Baptist Church. Today's Holy Spirit message is entitled, What is in Our Hearts, Part 8. The messenger is Pastor Charles E. McDaniel. He'll be coming from the King James Version of the Bible, the Old Text, Deuteronomy 6 and 5, and from the New Text, Matthew 12 and 35. Again, we thank you for taking time out of your day to spend with the Greater New Hope International Baptist Church. We pray that something has been said that filled your heart and your mind with praise so you will go and praise the Lord. And I sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works. Lord God Almighty, just, just and true are, the, are thy ways, thy King of saints. Revelations 15 and 3. And God is good and his mercies endure forever. We don't understand all things, but one thing I do, I trust him. And uh, that's all, all I can say is I trust him. And I even thank God that we're able to stand here today. Again, this, if it's God's will, this will be the last one. I'm not saying that I'm finished. I'm just saying this is the last one. If God said the same, if not, We'll just do what he says. Very simple. Very simple. All you got to do is do what he says. Now, we want to focus on today a very, 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 very familiar book in God's Word. Everybody know John 3. And most of them say John 3, 16. But if we just stop there, we'll miss some truth. We will. We must go a little deeper in that because there's more there than yes, sometimes that most folks think meets the eye. Yes, it is, we still want to say, what is in our hearts, part eight, which is God's biblical numerics, new beginnings. I'm hoping that all I can do is tell you what he said. I hope it begins to build in your heart that you are starting to make new beginnings with God. You're, you're spending more time with him, and you're beginning to understand how much he loves you in spite of all that we say or do. Deuteronomy 6 and 5, always I base Old Testament scriptures. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thine soul and with all thy might. Very important again that we realize in Matthew 12 and 35 uh, it simply says a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things yes, and an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. Very simplistic. But right now it becomes a time when I must remind you again as to how you think. I didn't write it. God did. It says, for as Proverbs 23 and 7, I want to only do this, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Many of us have allowed people to say things to us that were very hurtful. And we think that's who we are. But you must learn, you can't think like that. you got to allow the Lord. The Lord said you're good enough for him. You ought to be good enough for anybody else. Don't allow anyone to take away that gift from you, the gift of life Amen. in the natural. Because many times we fear a man more than we fear God. We will try to please a man yes, Lord. instead of pleasing God. I even heard somebody say, man, run this place. He may run. He might think he does, but he don't. 
You might have a little something going on in the cosmos, but when the real deal, the earth is the Lord. I think that song made it plain. that none like him. Now, today we want again focus on Isaiah 26 and 3 through 5 again, because it's important that we begin to understand thou will. That wilt, it's an old English word, but it carries, it's almost like a, it just conveys more. I don't want to confuse it with saying it's like, but in essence it is kind of like a word when you say and God. I mean, that and means more than just and. And God said, let there be light. When God, when he says, thou wilt, you hear that? Keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because there's a condition, he trusteth in thee. I can say that unequivocally, that if you trust in him, Hey, you're in pretty good shape. But what happens is, a lot of times, we don't like to trust him. We, 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 we fiddle with things, and, and we, 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 we allow folks to do comparisons on us. And, and what happens when we think we're not as good as somebody else, that makes us think that we're less than what we are. But don't think that's strange. They've been doing that since time began. Even if they knew. We're going to go to John, the third chapter. And uh, we're going to commence at the 27th verse. And we're going to just keep going to the Lord's city for us to stop. Which will be about the 36th if we get a chance. But... There's truths there that will help you. There's things that you should have in your heart so that you have no doubt about God's love for you. You have no doubt of who will keep you. You will have no doubt no matter what's going on down here now. He will sustain me. Now back in this scene is some folks and some of them is John the baptizer, or John the Baptist, telling them that if he reads back that, hey, man, Jesus seemed like he, 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 he baptized more folks than you are, and all the people running to him, and, and trying to create like it's some kind of competition between a man and the Lord. Never going to happen. Plus, this man knew who he was, and he knew what he was sent to do. So I want you to understand that when we begin to accept the fact that you know who you are Amen. and you know who sent you yes, and you don't have no nothing that the Lord can help you through because you know he'll be there. Now after all that mess they talk about, let's go. John answered and said, and I want everybody to underline this now. It's one of these verses you ought to have in your heart. And John answered and said, a man can receive nothing, no thing, except it be given from heaven. Is that plain enough for y'all? I don't care what you own, what you have. What, what, what it's saying, James? Every good and perfect gift, where does it come from, sir? From above. Now, you got to know that. If you got a good job, where did it come from above? Because God said I, in Psalm 75, I set one up, put the other one down. It, it doesn't, in other words, this world or the cosmos has nothing to do with it. Now he keeps on going. He says here, ye yourselves bear me witness. You ought to have been looking. What it means. See, we, 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 we're beat up on a man of God or a woman of God. But we'll praise somebody that, that we think they're going to, you know. But he said, you, you yourself bear me witness that I say, I am not the Christ. Yes, sir. 
understand that you're not Jesus. I know a lot of folks think they are. Some preachers do. I don't know. That's between them and God. That you know, think they got more more to do with God than anybody else. Well, you see, I spoke to God yesterday, and He told me where to park my car. All right, all right. You ain't got something to park your car. God don't look at you in no way. But people try to say anything to elevate themselves. This man knew who he was. Look what he said here. You yourself bear witness that I said, I'm not the Christ, but that I am set before him. He knew what his mission was. Well, y'all say, well, what, what that got to do with me? Just read uh, Matthew 28. Right? <laughs> well, didn't he say that the Great Commission? That, so long as you know that, it, it's the same thing. You should know. What that means when someone say the great command. He said, go you therefore and what? And all the teaching them whatsoever I taught you. And lo, I'm with you. Even until the end. And see, that's where our focus have to be now. You should be excited now. Amen. If you really studied uh, Mark 13 and see how these things, wickedness in high places, and, and, you know, all of these things are being, what's done in the dark is starting to come to light now. God is letting you see it. In other words, we're not supposed to be bent out of shape about it, but understanding that these things must happen. That's kind of strange to me, but that's what God said. Didn't anybody say, but th these are just birth pains, you know, this ain't the real deal. But now, you and I must work toward that time when you and I can sing the song of Moses. I hope I can get that. In other words, you ought, do that means you got to go remember Deuteronomy 32? No, but you should be aware of the fact that those who overcome will be singing that song, saying that there is a rock, but he's not our rock. Yes, Lord. You see what I mean? I, I, I'm going to get all these things. Now, here, here's where it gets real beautiful. Look at the 29th verse. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. Now get hold of that because we're going to go where the scripture is going to seem a little strange to you, but it still deals with the heart and how you're supposed to be thinking. Now I'm going to say again, look what he said. He that has the bride is the bridegroom. See, we all are the bride of Christ. You understand what I'm saying? The whole church is. Yes. Male or female. There ain't no, no genders when the spirit comes about. You understand? Yes. But but that's a a, 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 a a way of defining and, and making it where we little pea brains can understand. Now, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Now, God wants us to be a virgin. Yes. Huh? Yes. Now, the only way we can really be a virgin is what we must be covered by the blood. Amen. Now remember that he that has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoices greatly. Why? Because of the bridegroom's voice. See, I don't know why the folks don't get excited when they hear the word of God. Amen. They, get, they get excited about everything. But this is not my voice. This is the bridegroom's voice. He's wooing you and talking to you and telling you how much he loves you. This, my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. Now, what are we really saying here? Turn with me, if you will. It'll be very explicitly in 1 Corinthians. The seventh chapter. Let's look at verses 35, 36, and 37. Pay close attention. And again, it says, And this I speak for your own profit. That's what we have meant. The voice is not to put you down. See, a lot of men, we study. If somebody trying to tell you to do something and it don't edify you, it's not a God. It doesn't bring you up. He said, It has to profit you. And folk claim they're going to use him as money and I'm going to give you this thing and it'll prop. No. I'm sorry. And this I speak for your own profit. Not that I may cast a snare upon you, 
I mean, I'm not, any man of God is not trying to enslave you or enslave you or make you feel like whatever, you know, this, that, and other. He, he the kingpin and you got to do what he say. That's not what it's saying here. Yeah, I'm a, whatever I speak, it has to be for your profit that I may cast a snare upon you, hold you hostage. I don't own anybody in here, but for that which is common. When you leave here, you ought to have a little joy. <laughs> yeah. You're supposed to be laid back. You don't let nobody see your sweat because you know what your mission is and you know whose you are. And that ye may attend, I say that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Hmm. Isn't that amazing? When you begin to get this right, you can, you can do whatever God told you to do without distraction. What does that mean? None of that foolishness you did in the world going to get in your way no more. Remember last week you said he'd lead the dark in the darkness. He, 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 keep his, he keep the feet of his saints. He will do that if you and I will do what we supposed to do. Now let's keep on reading here. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncommonly towards his virgin. Oh. You got to understand the etymology of you the bride. You act uncommonly to yourself. When you decide that you're going to do it, you wipe away your status as a virgin with God. Or oh, did they hear that? Hmm? Uncommonly meaning you just throw whatever I told you in the river and tell the fish to eat it. Now know his virgin. Now everybody in here ain't got no virgin. But in other words, he's talking about it just like she said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and, and change from their wicked ways, they, and I'd heal the land. What are you, Derek? Are you beginning to put it together? Well, ain't nothing but Derek. He will heal the land. Physically, right here, if I get this land here, the other land got to be here because I'm walking on it. And everywhere my foot should touch, he said, I own it. Are y'all beginning to put that together now? Praise you, my dear. If she passed the flowers of her age, in other words, God said, as long as I give you life, you got to still remain a virgin. I'm flying a little deep here. I hope y'all. And need so require. Let him do what he will. He sinneth not. Let them marry. Oh, but see, you're thinking fleshly. But that's not. Remember what we just read over here? Did anybody read it? He that has the bride is the bridegroom. You have to marry Christ. At the last, you know, at last day. The day of the Lord. You must be in that first resurrection. How do I get that? Obey his word. Yeah. Understand what God. These are Hebraism. These are ways that when. If you don't understand this. They preach it in one out there in boom boom land. Check me out. Get your strong concordance and come down. Uh, uh, what else can he mean? Yes, that whole chapter does deal with physical marriage, but it's a little spiritual aspect of it. That you must be that bride of Christ. Keep yourself in a way. Now, how do we know that's true? Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast. How are you supposed to stand steadfast where? Oh, isn't that amazing? <laughs> oh, glory to God. Can you get excited this morning, church? Look what the word is. But now, 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 nevertheless, he that standeth fast in his heart, having no necessities, but has what? Power. Listen and underline. But has power where? Over his own will. And have so decreed in his where? Heart. I made a statement. This, this is plain and a child can understand. Decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin. 
What what do you do? What what happens? Do it well. You do it well to keep yourself in a position with Christ. In other words, have the the, the it's kind of short. If you know you're sin, what? Confess it. It's very simple. Don't walk around trying to care. Say, Lord, I messed up. <laughs> Forgive me. That's all you gotta do. You see what I mean? Then we know last week, as you see, Lord have mercy. Well, I'm going to give y'all a little Zechariah. Uh, uh, Zechariah 3 and 7. Very important that you begin to understand. I said understand that he will. Now look what it says, Zechariah 3 and 7. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou will walk in my ways, and if thou will keep my charge, Oh, we already, well, I ain't got no, yes, you do. I keep telling you, go to, the, go, go to Matthew 28 and read them last three verses. You'll have a charge. And even then, God can take you high if you let him. Somebody shout anyway. Amen. Thou will keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house. Hmm. The elect will have something to do at, at the Lord's day. And what I understand, judge means I will teach. So I, I, hope he, I hope he give me a chance to teach. Because some folks, I like to get them, teach them a little more. See, you don't, God don't want anybody to be lost. And thou shalt also keep my courts. Meaning, you, you, you don't have, you can't judge anybody, but you can teach them. And begin to learn and you read Revelation that will be priests. What does priests do? They teach. They judge certain things. Yeah. Like in the big when we had judges in the beginning. Yeah. Okay? There's nothing new about that. And I will give the place to walk among these that stand by. Understand. When you keep the heart right. Like I told you, never get bent out of shape because an immediate family seemed like they buck wild. You will always have a chance if you choose to do so. I told you, read Ezekiel, what? 44 and 25. If you want to go to doc, you can go over on the other side of the Gulf. You can't save them, but you can sure tell them better get your act together because if you don't make that second one, bud, you're in a whole heap of hurt. Okay? Now, Let's get back to John 3. It's some more beautiful truths here if we will let God speak to our heart. Yes, Lord. See, everybody talking about, I, I couldn't have it. That's not what we just read. Okay? You will have what? You will have the ability to rule over your own will. Remember Paul said, I beat my body in a subjection. That certain things, don't ask God to do something he didn't told you to do. Because he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. You will keep the charge. But let's go. Now, how do I do that? We just read the voice of the bridegroom, uh, Lord Hammer. But here's one I want everybody to underline. We hear this all the time. But this is a very key like uh, ingredient in your walk with God. Will y'all read it with me? Let's go. John 3 and 30, what does it say? He must what? But I must what? Is that in your heart? <laughs> see, see, if you, know, if you know that, you don't be hopping up in his face talking about this, that, and nothing so forth about what you want to do. Because you must what? Decrease. When you can do that, when you can be able to say, Lord, thy will be done. You're not 